Passion, a small word yet holds so much depth and so much meaning to a person. Purpose, another small word yet also holds so much depth and so much meaning. When these two words are combined, something beautiful and powerful happens. Our hearts begin to beat a little bit faster. Our palms might start to get a little bit more sweaty. Our minds start to think in different colors. It's as if we start to see things that aren't part of this world. We taste things that are beyond our imagination and we hear things that are beyond our universe. This is what happens when passion and purpose unite. The beautiful thing is that with God, he designs us in our ways and our thinking. He's the one who creates and puts plants, our desires, and, and our purpose and our passion in our heart within his own timing. So, in today's presentation, I will discuss my journey in discovering my purpose and my passion. Through seeking God daily and since coming to my faith, God has placed on my heart a passion for the younger female population while combining it with my major of public relations. So, I stand here today thankful to God for the fact that he's placed this upon my heart my passion and my purpose. So, good morning, good morning, faculty of Biola, my mom, and my fellow classmates. My name is Kiara Ray Bernal, for those of you who don't know me. Um, and my passion is helping young girls find their own inner beauty and confidence and within this society today. And I'm planning on doing that with combining it with my passion of my major, public relations. So, a little background of me. I grew up right next door in the lovely city of Whittier, California. Growing up, I was always surrounded by females. <coughs> I grew up in a household with my dad and my mom, my two younger sisters, many girl cousins around the house, and a lot of aunts, and my two wonderful grandmas. Then, after graduating eighth grade, fast forward the story, um, I attended an all-girl four-year high school. So again, surrounded by so much more girls. So I guess you could say I've always been around a lot of um, estrogen. <laughs> um, but being around so many women and females and girls of different ages throughout my whole life <coughs> has really shaped my viewpoint of how I see women and girls and how they're being portrayed. And more so, how girls see themselves in this society and in this world today. So after high school, I attended my local community college for three years before transferring to Biola University, where I originally entered as a communications major. I learned at a young age that I was always passionate about people and that I loved supporting my loved ones and my family and my friends and everything that they did. For example, when my sister Brianna played powder puff in high school, um, I got really excited when I knew she would become involved in this. And even though it wasn't me playing the game, I threw myself in there as if I was. I got my family together, my, my own friends, um, my sister's friends, I don't even know, half the people on that. And I was like, hey guys, let's come together and let's support my sister. And I created events, and I still cleaned up here, and we all went to the game. And I even went as far as making these shirts all by myself the night before because that's how passionate I was about supporting my sister because it was something that she was passionate about and really looking forward to and excited. Um, another example is my other sister, Alexa. She was nominated to be homecoming queen and, um, last year. And again, I threw myself in there as if I was the one who got nominated. And I got all my family and friends too. And I said, hey, my sister's going to be you know, walking down with the court. Um, Let's all come together and, and support her and, 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 and just get her really excited about this because I knew that this is something that she was passionate about. And also, it's not shirts, but I even went as far as making between 30 and 40 of these and I handed them out to so many people and to all of her friends and my family and I was like, you guys have to hold this when, when they call her name. So, that just goes to show and it was in these moments, even though they were in internships, they were nothing huge or or a part of college, it was in these moments that made me realize that I chose the right major of public relations because PR is all about standing behind your client or your, your business or an organization or a nonprofit, whoever you're working for, and really supporting them and showing them in good light and, 
and maintain a good image for them. And that's what I try to do with my family and for those who were um, excited about something they were passionate about. Also, even in my church life, again with women, I held a women's ministry for five months, again talking about my passion of girls and women finding beauty within their own life. Not only just physically, but within themselves internally. And I just want people to know that, and these girls to know that, you know, you are wonderfully made and fearfully made by God, the creator of the universe. And he put you together beautifully just the way you are. And it's such a deep passion of mine to make sure that girls and women of all ages truly understand this. So, now a show of hands, please. Who here knows a female? Okay, that's what I thought. Um, so think of your mom, your cousin, yourself, a neighbor, a friend, anyone. Have you or have you ever known someone who has been, had an issue with body shaming or, or self-image issues? Because we all have. And if you say you haven't, I don't believe it. <laughs> but um, we're exposed to so much media and so much advertisements and so much of this, of this body shaming every single day. And we see thousands of images and sometimes we know it knowingly or unknowingly and it has such an effect on us. In our society, the sad part is that our society has become so numb to this. We see it and even though we don't know it, we just go home and then we lay down in bed at night and it has such an effect on us. So. So I have a quick little video about this topic. I, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing people say that there's only five or six different types of bodies. None of those look like me. Girls with muscle. What a girl with big butt. Women need to control their body. Because I'm just so fake. Wow. 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 I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing people say that as a woman, you can't be muscular and beautiful. I'm tired of hearing that real women need to have curves. Retail workers telling me, oh, try this on. It'll hide your, I don't know what. What are they hide? I'm tired of hearing that women shouldn't have hair anywhere. People automatically assume that I'm some kind of feminazi because I don't shave my arms, but it's just the way my body is. I'm tired of having other people label critique, debate, I think they deserve to have an opinion about my body. My body is my concern. My body is not perfect and that's okay. Not here for you to break a political agenda. Not all that I am. My body is healthy. My body is different every day. My body is strong. My body is my body. My body is not for discussion. My body is mine. My body is mine. My body is mine. So that just goes to show that people deal with this issue all the time and we're being criticized on a daily basis by so many people, sometimes by even other females or other women in our life. We see media and these are the things that our daughters see and that we see and that our loved ones see and we try to live up to a standard that's totally unrealistic and it is so damaging to our own soul and to our own growth. Okay, so now I'm going to be speaking about my major, public relations. PR has taught me so much. It has been such a valuable resource to me, not only academically or career-wise, but personally and in my own personal growth within learning more about the industry. Um, PR, PR has helped me learn to promote a brand or support a client and, and what it means to, to manage someone's image and how to bring them into good light, all while combining it with doing my work ethically and morally and being transparent with not only my client, but being the middleman and also being transparent with the public and target audience as well. So, so far in my public relations career, I have ran um, a Mark PR course for the clothing brand Nasty Gal, worked on campaign reviews for Starbucks, um, working on currently with the <coughs> Dove campaign, uh, 
last semester, last year, worked with um, a nonprofit, a biology professor, Dr. Brain's nonprofit, Biofluency, and also worked with the campaign um, ARI. And as the semesters went by, I noticed that whenever we were given the freedom to choose a topic or the campaign or, um, or just simple homework assignments, I found myself always going back to, to issues and campaigns that were dealing with women and beauty and, and trying to find like, their own self-confidence and their own self-image. And so I put two and two together and I'm like, you know what, this is my passion. This is what, if I find myself always going back to this, this is something that I love and my heart keeps getting drawn to it. And so that's why I'm trying to combine this passion along with my major of public relations. So some of the causes that um, and organizations that have helped are, are many. And I'm so thankful to be born in an era where I'm able to see that this movement is, is happening. The ball is rolling. And we see celebrities now. And we're starting to see some brands take a stand and, and say, hey, you know what? I don't look like this. I don't look like myself when I'm posted in these magazines or in these advertisements. And some of them are even saying, you know what, I want to go all bare and all natural and just show me for who I am. And I think that's so awesome that we are able to live right now and be able to see that. And, okay, so one brand that I recently have started to fall in love with and discovered is Aerie. And for those of you who don't know, um, Aerie's brand is the sister store of American Eagle. And Aerie is, um, uh, they sell like women's undergarments, so like bras and underwears and pajamas. But what really makes it stand out to me, even though it's not a huge brand like some, like Apple or Nike, I really, really love what Aerie stands for. Um, and what they stand for is that they have a campaign currently called Aerie Real. And within this, all of their models in the advertisements are completely real. So everything you see is completely natural. The rolls, the stretch marks, the little freckles and moles on their bodies, it's all them. And Aerie doesn't want to hide away from that. Everything they want to show is, is real. And I feel like as a company and a brand, for them to just show that, how much more transparent can you be in your advertisements and in your campaign? And I feel like this really, really draws so many girls to, to want to be a part of this brand and this movement and, and be like, hey, you know what? Like, I'm starting to get a better understanding that these models don't look the way they do and, and, and these ones are and I look like that too so I can wear this brand. It's not just limiting and it's not just minimizing to one public. And what I really love uh, is a quote that Jennifer Foyle, she's the Aries Chief Merchandising Officer, um, so it says, the purpose of Airy Real is to communicate that there is no need to retouch beauty and to give young women of all shapes and sizes the chance to discover amazing styles that work best for them. So, like I said, for a brand to want to have a style that's for everyone and for all women of shapes and sizes is so amazing, especially in today's society where we see like Victoria's Secrets and some clothing lines that are only aiming at one public. This one's aiming at all of them and saying, anyone can wear this. You too can be um, like an airy girl as well. Other organizations that have taken a step in this movement um, that I've really, really loved too is the Dove for Real Beauty campaign. Um, they too have brought together women of different shapes and sizes and ethnicities and are showing as well, you know, we want women to feel beautiful within their own skin and we want to make a stand. So this just shows that the door is opening, doors are opening and that women are starting to become, maybe not quickly but slowly, women are able to start to gain a little bit more self-confidence than what they had the day before. So to tie this all in with scripture, Psalm 139.14, this is my favorite. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are, wonder are wonderful, and I know that full well. This verse is huge. 
I want girls and women to know that they themselves are beautiful and that they are fearfully and created by the hands of God. Next verse I have is 1 Samuel 16:7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And I want girls to know that they are so loved by something so much more greater than themselves. Someone beyond this world. And many people will judge us on our outward appearance, but it's so wonderful that we serve a God who looks on our heart and not on our physical appearance and what's on the outside. I also have 1 Peter 3, 3 to 4. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of your hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which in God's sight is very precious. We're all going to get new bodies one day. This life is so temporary. What God wants to see is what's in our heart. And I love how it says the gentle and quiet spirit, because God is going to see us for who we truly are at the end of the day. And this one, Proverbs 31.8, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, and ensure justice for those being crushed. So I want to be a voice for young women. I want to be the voice for the girls who are struggling with this issue and who are, are hurting and struggling. I want to be someone who is able to help make a difference. So after graduation, my goal is to become a part of something that is so much more bigger than myself. I want to contribute in making a difference with this issue. I want to make a stand, and I want to be a part of this movement. So, now you have learned about my background, hopefully you became more aware of this issue, how it all ties in with scripture, and my goals and plans after graduation. So, in conclusion, I want to leave with this quote, girls of all kinds can be beautiful, from the thin plus size short, very tall, ebony to porcelain skin, the quirky, clumsy, shy, outgoing, and all in between. It's easy though because many people still put beauty into a confining narrow box. Pledge that you will look in the mirror and find the beauty in you. So I want all of us to know that God has made us exactly the way that it pleased him and for a purpose and reason. And in my opinion, I think the human body is the most wonderful and complex and beautiful design that God has ever created. And I hope to one day be a change that this world needs and to be the change that this, this world will see in the future. So, thank you, and I'll open the floor for questions.